it's Sue Verhoeven here and I am back with another recipe after quite a long break from it. Um, today what I'm going to be cooking is a no bits chilli that uses up all the vegetables that I've got in my fridge that need to be used up. The reason I'm doing a no bits chilli is those of you who know me well will know that my son uh, doesn't do bits and he also doesn't do fruits and vegetables except broccoli. Um, he has a sensory processing disorder and he doesn't like the feel of these in his mouth but he's fine when everything is whizzed up so I'm going to be doing this very very quickly. Um, I'm going to put all the ingredients in my ninja and whiz it up um, and then I'm going to fry it off until it all softens I'm going to add some liquid and I'm going to add some flavour, some spices and herbs and stuff to it. And I'm going to let that simmer until it's ready and then I'm going to blitz it up into a liquid. Um, then I'm going to add my beans and a meat substitute because this is going to be something that I can eat as well as a plant-based um, vegan. Is there any other type of vegan? Um, so it's something that I can um, get to as well. I'm going to portion these up in my freezer with a portion of rice and a portion of the chilli because my son would like to come home and make his dinner as soon as he gets home from school and I'm not always here. So this is something that I can dip in, the whole family can dip in rather than me making a meat based one and then I do all this cooking and then there's nothing for me to eat. So. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be trying some new products, so I shall let you know how they go. So, what are my ingredients that I've got hanging about in my fridge? Well, I've got red and yellow peppers that I have had some of for a salad. So I'm going to be whizzing those up and using those. I have got some, and I'm going to put all the nutritional benefits of, of the, the fruits and uh, there are no fruits in this, the vegetables in it, um, so that you can see on this video. Um, carrots, I've got these little baby kind of multicoloured carrots, yellow, purple and the usual orange carrots, so I'm going to put them in. I have got some broccoli that needs using up, so I'm going to put these babies in it. I have some cauliflower, um, quite a bit of cauliflower, I'm not going to put it all in because I have a massive cauliflower. Um, but I'm going to put some cauliflower in this. I have a tomato that I chopped up for a salad. I have got some fine beans. I love these. Um, they're going in it as well. Um, a courgette or zucchini that I've got that needs using up. So that's going in it as well. I have some portobello mushrooms that I didn't get around to doing anything with and they are going to go in as well because mushroom gives it that kind of meaty texture which I'm going to be looking for. Um, I also have some kale which I'm going to be putting in. Um, this needs eating um, so I will show you me prepping it ready to get whizzed up. Oh what spices am I going to use? Um, I'm going to be using some ground cumin and I'm going to kind of free base this really. Um, cayenne pepper. I'm going to be putting some turmeric in it because it's so good for you and I like the colour it makes it go. And some paprika. That's going in it as well. And I've got a few chilli seeds left because I've eaten the whole packet of this in about the last two weeks. Um, I'm not going to put too much in because um, my family always complain I make it too hot, but I try it and it doesn't feel hot to me, but it blows their heads off. So I'm going to try and be careful. Um, so the beans I'm going to use are red kidney beans. I like to put a mixture of beans. There's nothing that says that you have to just put red kidney beans in a, in a, in a chilli. So I love the taste of red kidney beans. My son loves all pulses, so that's a winner. Um, black eyed beans are going in. And I've got some adzuki beans, which are also going in. So these are going to give it different sizes of beans, different colours, etc. So what I'm going to do with these beans is I'm going to rinse them really well. Although they're all in water, it doesn't say salted water, there will be salt in there. And I want to rinse the salt off them because I don't want too much salt to be going in the dish. I won't be adding any salt myself. 
Um, I have got a handful of garlic cloves here. So I should be putting garlic in it. Um, and this is the mint that I'm going to be using, which I've had in my freezer. And I'm going to treat it just like normal mint and cook it from um, uh, frozen. It's from a company called The Meatless Farm Company. And this is completely plant-based. Um, so I haven't tried it before. But as you can see, it looks like mince meat, but it's not. It's plant-based. And what is it made of? Do, 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 do. It's soya protein, so that's really, really good for you. Um, it's got pea protein in it as well, coconut oil. Um, and it's got some other... This is obviously a processed product, but what I'm trying to achieve is a healthy meal for my son that he can make himself, that he will enjoy, that's home-cooked, that's packed full of vegetables and goodness. Um, so that's what I'm trying to achieve, and I know there will be a lot of mums out there whose children don't like bits, but they want to get some more fruit, more vegetables or fruits into their diet, and this is a great way to do it. I've been cooking like this for a long time for my son, otherwise I don't think he would have had a vegetable in 10 years. So um, let's get prepping. Hello, I'm back again. I forgot to mention onion. You need a trusty onion in a chilli, I think. So I'm going to rough, rough chop this. So I'm just going to go in my whizzer. My ninja, my little kitchen helper. Beans, they're just going to go in as well. I'm just chop them a bit in half. I've already, I've already taken the tails off these. Okay, pepper. I don't even know why I'm chopping them this much, they don't need it, but hey ho, I like to do a bit of chopping with my knives. Things are going everywhere, because I'm being all quick and efficient, maybe not as efficient as I'd like to be. <laughs> so this will give it quite a bit of liquid, the peppers are, as you know, full of water. So it helps to give it a liquid, a bit of flavour. So Tommy, stick that in. Tomato. And I'm going to stick these carrots, which I've already taken the ends off in as well, and I think that's probably enough for the first whiz. Time for some whizzing. There. I didn't look how many seconds that was, but... Seconds rather than minutes. Oh, it looks like a salsa, doesn't it? it? Looks delicious. So as I've got, got more than one bowl full of this, I've got a bowl here that I'm going to tip it all into. So I can load it up again with the other vegetables. smell is insanely gorgeous as you know I'm all into my smells love the smell of vegetables gosh I should really make that into a salsa really wouldn't that be delicious nom nom cauliflower mm. I do like raw veg Although this is slightly bendy, it's still very crispy. Oops, there's a bean. I forgot. I didn't see. Okay, let's put this pepper in. The yellow pepper. See, we're kind of eating the rainbow here. We've got so many colours, it's going to look glorious as it's cooking. And then hopefully, the mix of yellow, green and red will make it brown, like your traditional chilli is a brown colour. There is method in my madness. All right, let's get these mushrooms chopped up. I don't know how they whiz up, because they're a bit softer than they're them to be. I've had to take the skins off these, because as you can see, they're... They're past their best, but they'll be lovely in this. Put a bit of broccoli in there. Right, I think we're ready for our second week. That looks really nice, doesn't it? Lovely colours. That's going in my bowl. There we go. Gosh. I always overdo it with vegetables because I like to get carried away and before I know it I've cooked up a massive storm of stuff. Right, so I'm going to pop those back in, I'm going to put mushrooms at the bottom. This one's not as dry as the other two, so I've got the skin on this one. Nice and dope, so there we go. Whoops! On the floor. No worries, the floor's clean. And I'm one of those 20 second girls. Never had food poisoning or been ill yet, so there's my zucchini or my courgette. And this is the last that I'm putting in. So what I'm going to do with these, I'm going to take the stalks off by pulling off the... Um, my pigs will like these stalks, so that I'm just using the leaves. 
the next time when I buy this I'm going to do it before I put it in the fridge because it makes means you don't have to do this every time you cook with it. Here's my kale. I wonder, I wonder if this is going to manage all this dry kale. I'm sure it will. It's got massive sharp blades on it. Okay, so that's everything except my garlic, which I shall crush in later. I've done that for a bit longer because the kale was kind of stuck at the top, which it still is. Okay. I'm going to have to do a fourth whiz. Those bits out. I think I've overfilled that a little bit. But this is all going to get whizzed up again when it is cooked and soft. I'm going to stir it all together but I don't think I've got room in this bowl. I think we're going to be eating this for a hundred years. That is my chopping knife. Right, that will do. In fact, somebody asked me about my knives recently. They're the Robert Welsh Signature Knives. They're absolutely brilliant. I got these for my birthday last year, which was literally a year and a week ago, and they have not been sharpened, and they are absolutely on it, all over it. So here are my ingredients. Let's see if I can mix some of those through so you can see all those lovely colours. Look at that. It's going to be delicious. Can you see those? Yes, you can. So this is packed full of yumminess. Okay. I am going to start frying that off now. So it's time to fry it all off now. And that's what I'm going to do. I will zoom in for you so that you can see. all gone in beautifully. These are great, these little spatulas, because you don't have to waste anything, as you know, I'm a waste not want not, can't abide waste. It's pretty clean. And of course there's a few bits in the whizzer still, so they've got to come out as well. Can't leave them. Good bit of courgette there. I always like to use two wok spoons. I've got this is one of my favourites, got this on my honeymoon. Coconut wood. And this one was from IKEA. And they don't make them anymore and I love it. So I put a little bit of olive oil in, in the in the pan. I know strictly that's processed, but it's a good oil. It's already quieting down now. There we go. So, it smells glorious and I haven't even got any spices in it yet. I'm going to add my garlic now. This is a great garlic press. Sadly, they don't make them anymore. You can just squeeze it, skins and all, in there and you just take the skin out. It had a special poker that used to poke it out, but sadly, my sister came to cook. Well, that's not the sad bit. The sad bit is that when she cleared up, we threw the little bit that pushes all the garlic out again. Like a bit of garlic. I'm going to add a couple of cups of water to this, just to give it some do because I don't want to add any more oil and there is rather a lot in the pan. There we go. So 
So this will soften, that liquid will all be boiled away, I should imagine. That's softening up nicely now, so that it doesn't all evaporate. I'm going to put a lid on it, turn it down to simmer. Hello, it's Sue Verhoeven here again. Um, I've been simmering this for about 10 minutes. Um, it's not as soft as I would like it for my son, but this is way plenty enough for you because you want some bite on this if you're not actually making this for somebody else. In fact, you could put all these vegetables in without mincing them up so much. So, where's my trusty fork? This is still a bit crispy to the bite because I've got a lot in here. And when I whiz this up, it will have bits in it and I won't get it past my son. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some herbs and spices to it. Where's my trusty tiny little teaspoon? I don't think that will fit in there. No, that won't. So that's about two teaspoons of turmeric. I'm going to put... A Oh, Alexa's getting in the act. This is um, a heat table teaspoon of paprika. Paprika! Ground cumin. Heat te tablespoon. Te teaspoon. You can't see me adding this, can you? Because I haven't adjusted my camera. It's there. And cayenne pepper. I'm going to go a bit easy on this because they said it was too peppery last time. So that's kind of, well, maybe not that easy. A level teaspoon of that. Chilies. Almost gone. I should be putting that on my trusty shopping list. Gosh, the packets got all screwed up. That much. And hope it's not too hot. You can always add more. That's the thing with chilli. So I'm just going to fold this in now to add some of the chilli flavour to the veg. Mmm, those aromas are really, really delicious. It's already turned it a slightly yellowy colour from the turmeric, which is so good for you. I kind of add it to just about everything now. I really love the background flavour of it. Another taste. That is peppery enough, but I think it could do with a little bit more turmeric. It's about another teaspoon there. And I'm going to put some more ground cumin in it because I don't think it's got enough of that. And I can always add flavour later because I'm going to be adding the other ingredients when I've got this soft enough to make into a kind of a paste, kind of a liquid. So, put the lid back on, a little bit more, ste they're really steaming in here the vegetables, steaming. So I'm back again and this is cooked probably for about another five, ten minutes, so about 20 minutes in total. Um, as I was saying, this is so it's soft for my, for my son, but you don't need to cook it this long. You really don't need to cook it hardly at all um, if you're not afraid of bits. In fact, you don't have to whiz it up at all. But this is looking nice and soft, just how I want it. So let's just try it with all those flavours in it. Mmm. Mmm. Lovely. Look at that looks delicious. So I'm going to put this in my blender um, and blend it all up into a liquid. So let's see how that goes. So here's my big blending jug which I haven't actually used that much um, but it's got blades that go all the way up the top so I'm hoping this is going to do a really good job.
Well, it's all gone in. Here goes. I'm just going to pulse it to begin with. Oh yes, that's going to work nicely. That has worked wonderfully. Actually, what I did is um, I stopped making it up myself and I just pressed the uh, the food puree menu, which does the whizzing and the pulsing and the different speeds to make sure that it all gets incorporated. Look at that. That is going to be just fine, I think. Let me just get a spoon. Need a spoon now. See if it's soft enough. As perfect as like baby food. Perfect! Yes! Hi, it's Sue Verhoeven here. It's another day, um, as it got way too late for me to finish this recipe. But what it does show is that you can prepare the veg beforehand, um, which is a good thing. So I'm just going to do the last bit. So I showed you this before, the Meatless Farm Company. Um, as you can see, it looks very like beef mince, but it's not. Um, it's defrosted, so I'm going to cook this in my wok. I'm going to fry it off, which is what it says to do, just to treat it like normal kind of mince. Um, and I've got my beans, which are already drained, but I put them in the fridge overnight in this container. And I put this in the fridge as well, which is the vegetables. So I'm going to add it all together, and it should be fairly quick now because my son's quite hungry. So hoping he's going to like it. So here we go. So I'm just going to put a flash of light olive oil in the pan. The wok's already hot and sealed. Turn this up. I don't know about you, but I like to cook everything on full tilt. So here it goes. Let's see. No, it smells really nice, actually. I wonder whether it will hold together or not, like mince. Whoops, that went everywhere. browning already. Mm, smells nice. Okay, there's my other one spoon. Just want to give it, give it kind of brown really. Oh, it smells nice. I'm going to add some seasoning to it. My trusty black pepper, which I love on everything, including strawberries. Have you ever tried strawberries um, with black pepper on them? Oh my goodness me, it's just sensational. Let me turn it down a bit. It seems to have absorbed all that oil already. I just want to break it up into its bits, because I'm going to let it cook in the vegetables. Now, I would say you have to be careful not to smash this into just a paste, which obviously meat wouldn't go like that. It's pretty cool. Oh, it, smells really it smells really delicious, actually. Just let that cook for a little bit. It's cooked off a little bit. I'm going to have a little taste now. Uh, a little bit of brown. Just looks like mince. Um, it's got a very mild flavour, very kind of almost biscuity taste. Not um, oh, with an after flavour of meat, I would say. After flavour of meat. 
but it's not neat. Okay, I'm going to add my beans now. There they are. That is going to be a lot of chilli. Turn it right down. A bit more black pepper. I have stirred off the beans um, with the um, imitation meat and I'm now going to add this to it. I've added another cup of water because it had gone quite solid as it had cooled. Um, I thought it would be easier to um, kind of get out of the container for a start um, and add more liquid to the dish. So here we go. See they're just stirred together now. They look really nice don't they? Look at that. Lovely. Adding more brown to the colour I'm looking for. Hmm. Not quite sure what to do with this because I hate waste. There we go. Spatula alert. Spatula alert. If I'd done this when it was hot, it would have all slid out, but that isn't always what happens in life. Sometimes you have to put it on ready for another day. Okay, I'm going to get over myself with that. Mm, quite a bit stuck in there. Get that out in a minute. Let's give it a stir. Oh, it smells like chili now. I'm sure it looks like chili. But it's the taste and the texture that counts in my family. Oh, that's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Delicious, if I might say so myself. I'm just going to see how much this will loosen off as, as it heats through. And if not, I may add some more water to it don't want it to be this thick but there are a lot of vegetables in here. I have decided to add some more liquid to this because it's quite thick so <laughs> I'm not going to waste anything. I'm actually going to put some water in this. There we go, I'm happy with that. There we go. Because something as thick as this, it will be easy to scorch the bottom of it. Because it's kind of, it's not going to non-stick. Although my wok is very well seasoned and it is non-stick, it wouldn't be with this kind of consistency. I may even add some more beans to this. It seems to be more vegetable and less bean. A little taste. Little taste with the beans and the meat. Mmm, that is good. Tastes good, looks a bit weird. <laughs> a bit like me. I've decided to add some more beans as I suspected it wasn't beany enough. So I'm adding these white kidney beans. They taste like red kidney beans. They look like this, and I love them. Nom, nom, nom. Just a few more beans through this. And all I need to do now is wait for it all to come up to temperature, and I'm going to serve it with some pilau rice that I made the other day that I've got in the fridge. And I'm going to take it up for the, the verdict from my son to see what he thinks of it. Let's 
see how hot it is. Those beans won't be hot, will they? That is really, really, really good. I, of course, will slab mine with a lot more chilli than this. If it's got a nice bite to it, not too much of a bite. I am hoping I've got this right this time. It's all heated up now. It's looking fantastic. And I've served it up with my basmati rice. Look at that. Doesn't it look gorgeous? It tastes gorgeous. I've had quite a few mouthfuls of this. Um, but I just le literally had to heat it through and it's ready. So fingers crossed he likes it. Bye. It's a winner with my son. I'm so happy because a lot of this is going in the freezer for him. So that's just brilliant. He said it was very good on the flavour steaks and the consistency is just perfect. So I am delighted. I'm going to have some myself now. Okay, lots of love to you all my lovely lovelies. Mwah. Bye.